pretty much that's why the south side of the range is Silverleaf. That's why everybody hits there, and I was up at the north side, so nobody <laughs> saw nobody saw how many balls I was shanking. <laughs> see Dallas on the other end of the range with binoculars, just trying to <laughs> just trying to get tips. We don't want nobody to see what he got going on. So what we what we got to look forward to you for this upcoming season, if y'all ever get to play. You know, I hope you know what I mean. What, what do yeah, we got to look forward I liked, to? I like I like how you worded that. <laughs> uh, we just gonna go to this. Uh, let's go to this white flag right okay, here. Okay. Okay. Right? I'm gonna let you go first, though. You know. I like the pressure. You go ahead and go first. All right. I'm kind of intimidated by you. Want me to just go ahead and do what you say? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and do I was going to argue back with you right there. You know what I mean? It's all good. Yeah. Hey, yo, welcome to Range Talk. Today we chop it up with renowned pitcher Dallas Keuchel, formerly of the Houston Astros and now with the Chicago White Sox. Chicago, stand up. If you follow this career, you know it's full of highs and lows and controversy. And being the emotionally unaware person that I am, I asked about all of it. But don't worry, he gave me the signal that it was okay. Uh, we also talked about his new love for golf and his new marriage and tried to get to the bottom of which is actually more important, you know? Honesty is key. No one said a broken home can't be a happy home. Uh, so sit back and enjoy. This is Range Talk. My boy Dallas, what's good, baby? What up, what up? How you feeling? Good, man. Man. I appreciate you uh, spending some time with me today. You know, us, uh, us Chicago AZ dudes, we got to stick together. I'm not an AZ dude yet, you know, but you give me hope. You know what I mean? You goals right now, you know? But now that uh, now that you splitting time between Chicago and AZ, let me ask you, be honest with me, what's your favorite city between the two? Be man. honest, though, be honest. I tell you what, if I didn't say Chicago, all the, all the snowbirds coming out here would get mad at me, but Honestly, this dry heat, growing up in humidity, I, I gotta say, AZ. I wore the Chicago Jays for you, dog. I was like, <laughs> I put on a visor for you. I don't know how the visor fit into that, but I, I felt like I, I thought I was gonna appeal to you. But I mean, you still loved it enough to buy a crib there, though. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There's I got a like couple homies that just rent up there. You know what I mean? It just, they just, you know, they're not gonna make it a thing. But you made it a thing. You committed. You know what I mean? There's nothing like summertime shy. Nothing like it. But I mean, so what you like the most about the city? I mean, spending time up there now? Well, to me, it's like a cleaner New York. That's a you big, got, that was very well You put. got up and down Michigan Avenue, the stores, obviously, the restaurants are great, but living up north, actually near Wrigley Field, which is kind of, <laughs> I shouldn't have probably said that, but. <laughs> hey, bro, you got to keep an eye on, you got to keep an eye on the ops, dog. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm by the lake, so we, the off days there in, in Shy, we go, we go out on, on the on the water and I mean it's 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 heavenly up there. How you feel about the food and stuff? What's the food scene like? What's the club scene like? You married now? I probably can't ask you a lot of stuff, but you know what I mean. What, <laughs> before before you made that transition, past life. your past life. Tell me about the past life experiences up in Chicago. Well, the two three days we were there, it was kind of like a little slice of heaven. But then, hopefully, the next city you go to is is almost like a Cleveland or something where you don't really have stuff to do. <laughs> so you kind of get your rest back up and you kind of get your, your batteries full charge. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. I've been needing a break. Like, uh, like we were just out here for the waste management. What you do for the waste management? Uh, my wife and I, we went out for the Pro-Am day. Yeah. And, and then we went out for the first day. We didn't want to get, we didn't want to get bamboozled with too, too much crowd. Because uh -huh. I think Friday and Saturday had upwards of like 300,000, 400,000 people. Yeah. But, but waste management is like, that's like my little, you know, my little away game experience for AZ. You know, I come down here, I do way more than I'm supposed to, and then I just need like that. I need to get away for a little bit so I could just recharge, recenter myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ask myself hard questions. Do I have a drinking problem? You know, the answer is, <laughs> the answer is no. I don't, I don't. I'm still clean, Callaway. Y'all don't worry about that. I'm okay. I'm okay. But yeah, so talk to me about like, man, your, your love affair with golf, man. When did this start? Honestly, it just started four months ago. Four months? Four months ago. And well, that was a good strike right there. Thank you, baby. Getting compliments from yeah. killers. So it, it, I never had any interest growing up. I was always football, basketball, baseball. And in Oklahoma, it was kind of a fourth, fifth tier sport for me. Fifth? Yeah, I think hockey would have been fourth. Bro, I don't even know five sports. <laughs> I, I would have been, I would have been ice, ice skating and hockey if I if I had a fourth fourth uh, option. But honestly, 
we fell in love with we fell in love with the area. The the COVID season in 2020, yep. we got suspended for three months. Yeah. And we we chilled out here when it was 105, 110 degrees, and we still fell in love with this. So we started looking at houses, and then we saw the golf courses out here, and I was yeah. like, well, <laughs> this might be the time. So fast forward to that next off season is is now, and we settled in a house and up at Silverleaf playing pristine greens and, and fairways. Yeah, Maybe so the rocks though, some bad bounces though, left and right, if, you, if you're not pushing the fairways. Bro, bro, Silverleaf is like a, uh, that is a very beautiful way to humiliate yourself. That's what I, you know what I mean? It's yes. A, it's, a, it's one of the most pleasurable, humiliating experiences that I've had on the golf course. I call myself uh, a dishonorable member of Silverleaf. Uh, you know, I, I carefully, invited you up here to do this show with me, so hopefully you could put in a good word with the folks over there, you know what I mean? I've been sending a lot of emails, they ain't been getting back to me for some reason. It's all right, now, now you're on with me. Bro, you only been playing four months? Yeah. Hit, wait, hit one more shot. <laughs> four months. He just striped every shot on the scene so far. You talking about some four months. I'll tell you what, for, for, for work, you got 40, 50,000 people, especially playoffs, you're pushing 60,000. Yeah. And, and my playoff experiences have been nothing short of amazing. Yeah. And it's like, you do your job, you know what you're, you put in the work, you go out and have fun, and, and whatever happens, happens. But I've never had more anxiety <laughs> in my life than going to the ranch for the first time and seeing John Rahm, Ben Herman, all these guys. They stripe. They, they, they stripe and everything. And I'm over there, I'm over there looking at the ball like, man, this thing is sitting on the ground. How, how, do, I, how do I not mess this up? Sure enough, cut, cut, hook, draw, everything. So, so it's like you you intentionally selected Silverleaf though, so you could be around a bunch of heavy hitters because you thought that as an athlete that was gonna expedite the learning curve. That's what that was the that was the method to the madness. Yeah, pretty much. That's why the south side of the range is Silverleaf. That's why everybody hits there, and I was up at the north side, so nobody <laughs> saw nobody saw how many balls I was shanking. <laughs> see Dallas on the other end of the range with binoculars, just trying to <laughs> just trying to get tips. We don't want nobody to see what he got going on. Yeah. I see you, dog. We yeah. all got our own processes, man. Yeah. So like, tell me, what, what kind of golf are you, bro? Like, is it you know? I got yeah, you the you the vibey type. You get out there, you got the music going. You just out there to chill. You the you know the competitive type. You like to gamble, you like the shit talk. What you? What I'm you kind should... of a I'm kind of a mixture. I'm kind of a jambalaya of sorts. I do. Ooh. So I, I do wait I do wait to uh, trash talk a little bit because I like to I like to survey the scene yeah. to see who can who who is really good yeah because usually if you're really good on the golf course if you're listening to music on the golf course and you're good yeah. you can usually handle some trash talk mm -hmm. if you're not that's when I try to take advantage because my handicap I'm trying to bring down those guys who I'm playing with are usually better than me right on a on a consistent basis so. Usually back back nine, so like 10, 11, I'll start chirping. Yeah, and then we'll put some we'll put some some better some better money out there. So so the trash talking is kind of like fast and furious. That's like your Nas button. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. all right, we getting late in the game. I, need I don't to use like, that till I have to. You don't use that until you have to. Yeah. See, that's different. Me, I start off with it. You know what I mean? Because I like to control the tempo of the game. And like, if you gonna kill me, kill me. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. how, that's the way I feel about it. If, yeah. if me talking crazy to you, unleash your inner demon. Let me see your inner demon so that I could go prepare for it, and then I play you next time. Then I know what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel you on that. I lose one. a lot though. I, I lose a lot. I like to I like to massage them. I like to massage them, get them feeling good. Yeah. And then you kind of break that ice, and you kind of just throw them in that frozen water. Yeah. Because usually they're they're skating real nice, and yeah. then they hit that crack and then they go down. Mm. That's that's my. That's kind of my. You're a lot more successful than me in life. I should probably heed that advice. No, but that's not true. Reason, to each for... their own, man. <laughs> <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> but yo, you, is that is it any crossover between the the, the opposition strategy in, in golf and baseball? Do you feel like do you kind of do it the same way? You a talker? You a talker on the field? Honestly, I kind of I kind of am, am too focused usually to You're too locked in to to talk. Do any pitchers talk crazy to people? Like, so we pitch one. Uh, so for me, starting pitcher, we, we pitch one, one every five days yeah, or five yeah. games. Yeah. And so the four games, we usually get to talk because mm -hmm. we're not pitching. Mm -hmm. So we're usually on the bench chirping or we're trying to get guys locked in and this and that. So that's the days I get to, <clears throat> I get to go at people. Yeah. But the day I'm pitching is usually the day I'm locked in trying to make sure that I'm, I'm ready to go for 
So it's never been like pitches on the mound that just like, you know, talking crazy to the batters. Like, just like, oh, bro, it ain't no way. You don't know what, boy. Oh, I'm about it, to it, tear you up right now, dog. It, inside my head is usually <laughs> is usually going on right there. But I don't ever I don't ever let the opposition know because, shoot, I make one mistake and they hit it out, then, then they're gonna start like, chirping. Yeah. So yeah. I don't wanna I don't wanna have any of that. That's cool. You can't I'm, have any of that 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 bad karma coming back at you. So you you a car, you like a superstitious person there, huh? Uh, a little bit, man. I tell you what, I I got I got a few quirks. Uh huh. I'm left-handed though, so we get away with it. See right there, I don't like what you just did because I had a. I striped mine, and then you just flushed yours. Bro, so it's I think like, that we just inspiring each other, dog. We got, like, real good energy flowing back and forth, even though you don't love my city the way I thought you did. You know what I mean? It's it's cool, though. We still going to adopt you. We still going to claim you, though. I didn't know you were going to drop that fire on your feet like that, man. I'm just saying it was for you. It was man. for I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make the best first impression. You know what I mean? So let's talk, let's talk baseball for a little bit, man. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, very decorated career. You done did a lot of really good stuff. But you know, this year in Chicago, you had a you had a rough little you know into into the season last year. Yeah. So talk to me about kind of what that what that felt like like during that kind of going through that rut. True. That's a heavy question. Yeah. I feel that like is. we established a rapport though, so I'm gonna just. No, I love that. I love that, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So honestly, I just let some exterior circumstances get to me, and that was very very uncommon for me, and a first actually in my career and. Um, Man, it took me about, I'd say a month and a half. And actually golf helped out because just being on the course, kind of being by yourself or being with some buddies, kind of just, you let go of stuff. Right. You can't change the past. Right. You can only try to help mold the future. Right. But man, it took me about a month, month and a half to kind of get over how it finished because honestly not being able to, to help the team in the playoffs, I mean, that's, Honestly, what I was signed for right. was to, to kind of help put in that work in the playoffs and push those guys to where they wanted to go. Yeah. I mean, stuff that I've done before is stuff that they want to do. So, man, I, I'll tell you what, it took me it took me a good chunk to to kind of get over that. What, I mean, and a lot of people, you know, and I, let's just set the set the bar here for all the people that be talking crazy on Twitter and all this other stuff. Most human beings are gonna spend the entirety of their life in a rut. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, you spending a couple months there, like whatever. But like, what is it like as a top tier athlete and competitor to like not be able to do things that you know you're capable of? Like, what's that? What's that feeling like on the field? You know? <sighs> Probably the best way I can describe it would be. If you're if you're at an office job nine to five, and you got everybody in the office, say you got a hundred a hundred uh, coworkers, and every one of them is coming up to you, and you'd be like, "Hey, you didn't you messed up that paperwork yesterday? Yeah, like we can't have that again. Yeah, and just over and over again because in sports everybody's watching. Yeah, so the mistakes are magnified. Also, the success is magnified. So right. it's it's kind of a you know, what, what do you got? Well, you got one or the other. Right. So we all want to succeed, but that's not it. I mean, somebody has to fail. Somebody has to lose. Mm -hmm. So you never want to be that that guy that loses. And that was it. I mean, that's that's the feeling is I come out here to the golf course and the guy that I bought my house from, he's like, I know you didn't end up like you wanted to. And I'm like, man, even this guy, <laughs> even this guy's on my butt. Like, <laughs> yeah, it follow you everywhere, dog. But it, it comes with the territory. I yeah. mean, I, I got thick skin. I'm I'm from Oklahoma. My my mom and dad used to used to give me some some lashings whenever I was out of line, and exactly. and uh, I consider that just a, a a part of life. Exactly. And uh, doesn't matter if you're an adult or a kid or an elder, man. You still got you still got lessons to learn. Hundred percent. So. Dog. So like now that we in the you know deep into this never end and off season that you in hopefully <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope yeah. that it, I hope that it is at some point dog but like uh, what you been doing differently like you know this off season kind of getting ready for next year kind of the same routine man to be honest with you being out in AZ is is really nice because there's so many ball players out here and it's it's one of those feelings where hey if I'm not feeling it one day. My buddy texts me or somebody else texts me, hey, let's go catch a workout, let's go throw, let's go do this and that. Right. And it's it's so easy just to kind of get the body ready for for what we're gonna prepare for. And then 
obviously, you know, now it's it's getting day job stuff, baseball done, and then we go out in the course, and then we just have a little bit more fun too. So, so how you been? How you been using golf as kind of escape from baseball? Is it like kind of like it, is it kind of like you lock in more intensely during the workouts and during the during the training, and then you get to golf and this where you relax? You know what I mean? How you using golf in the off season? It's kind of the best of both worlds. So I've used it to kind of get away from just you know a little bit of anxiety or stress, yeah. but also it, it's helped my body function. Right. Uh, some of the movements in golf are, are great for pitching and for just baseball in general. Bro. Usually it's all I've all I've been hearing since I picked up golf is it's the hockey guys and the baseball guys right. that get that get the best at golf quick. Good fast. And it's because some of the movements are, are correlated to our job. Right. But for pitching wise, I don't gotta worry about my baseball swing, so it's the it, it is the best. It is. <laughs> so I can go out here and swing for four hours and not have to worry about going in the batting cage and, and, and trying to do something else that, that is completely opposite of, of the golf swing. You feel like pitchers are the best uh, golfers in baseball? Without knowing golf the last four months, I would wholeheartedly say yes. Yeah, y'all the there, There's no doubt about it. We need to set up like some kind of like Ryder Cup for baseball for, for the MLB where oh, y'all just all be. duke it out. Now, I do, have, I, do have, I do have a few, a few position player buddies that would say otherwise, yeah. but um, bro, y'all mur- the pitchers murder the ball though, dog. Yeah, like y'all just I don't know what y'all be figuring out, like sequencing rotation wise or whatever, <laughs> they, bro. But y'all, it gets scary when y'all when y'all well, start let, getting a hold. Of. Let, let's hold that back because most of the most of the power pitchers are the ones that hit it hard. I'm more like finesse. My my game is like putting, and I'm good around the green. Uh-huh. So as long as I can get my driver in the fairway or not ob. Yeah. Not OB I, is like, I'm, that's more relatable for me. Not yeah. OB. Oh, yeah. I don't, fairway's a little overrated. Yeah. I right. like the challenge first. Exactly. Dog. I didn't want to start out being great. Then it's like a forearm workout. You in the rough, you got to dig some stuff out. You know yeah. what I mean? It got oh, like yeah. cross functional benefits not hitting the ball straight. People don't people no. don't talk enough about that. No, they don't. They don't. They don't appreciate <laughs> the uh, fringe and the rough and Bro, the. It's still part of the golf course, dog. And the aspects of the Arizona wildlife. <laughs> maybe come in contact with some coyotes or bobcats or something. Yeah, bro, I'm not a, uh, that's, that's one thing, that's, you lost me. Being a Chicago dude, like, I'm not, yo, dog. It, I, every course I go to, first question, like, hey, y'all got snakes here? Like, yeah. Hey, how, how we know the snakes over here? What, what should I be looking out for? So, so honestly, I, I, I want to, I want this lock at the end because I like, I like my day job. I love baseball. I always have. Right. But all I've heard is, is into March, early April, the snakes come out. So yeah, I'm like, hey, get, get me get me out of this course. Yeah. Get, get me out of here so I'm not coming in contact with some rattlesnake. You afraid of snakes too? I think everybody is, man. I don't think so, bro. There's a dude over there, uh, you know, that's filming us right now. He grabbed one barehanded. Bro. What, was it a little garden snake? Nah, bro. He actually got bit, had to get rushed to the hospital. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I just say that to say, you know, it's, it's some crazy people out here. I think that you know, I just want me and you to relate around the fact that we afraid of the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm good. I'm trying to find all our commonalities, make sure we become long-term <laughs> friends. You know? But, yo, so, so, gotta ask you one more hard question, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was worse? What was worse? The feedback that you got from last season or being affiliated with the Astros after that whole scandal thing, dog? What was, what was worse? What was, like, the tougher time for you personally? For me personally, it honestly was the end of this season, yeah. just because the, the the pitchers in the whole in this whole thing. Like, what did y'all with, do with Houston? Like, we had some benefit just scoring runs, but at the same time, if we didn't score runs, I was kind of upset. Exactly. So, and and I mean, we didn't have it the whole time, but like, as a pitcher. You're very selfish when it's your time to be on the mound. I right. mean, you're in the middle of nowhere. Like right. you're by yourself. Right. And it, to me, it's the hardest. It's the hardest job in baseball because you, you command the game. The game doesn't go without somebody throwing the ball. Right. So, the games were there wasn't any runs scored. That's the games that were most frustrating. And that's another one. See, no, I'm, I'm missy. I'm over here. You talking about some deep yeah. stuff? Now I can't focus. Tom, I mean, t- I, when I hear a great golf shot, I have to just <laughs> sit there and watch for a second. But that, that that's that's the most frustrating part to me, because I, I mean, I wasn't in the box. I wasn't getting getting signs and exactly. stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, those guys are my are my brothers, yeah. and I grew up with a lot of those guys. Yeah. So 
to have some of that stuff come out was was very disheartening. I mean, it, it took it took a minute. I, I had to. I talked with a lot of guys, and and I know a lot of guys took that to heart just because. Yeah, they wanted to do anything to win, but at that time, it was a lot of stuff going on around the league. Mm -hmm. So it just so happened that our stuff came out yeah. and we get the blame for Everybody it. Everybody doing it, dog. Everybody got their own little... I'm, I'm know, not going to say who was doing it and who wasn't, but yeah, there was... If you wanted to say it here, though, I mean, we have very few people that watch this show. You know what I mean? The last <laughs> time I checked, you know, this is very, this is a very closed circle, tight knit, the yeah. range talk group. You know, if you wanted yeah. to put that out there, you know, yeah, the I, ratings I, would appreciate it. I will say there was, there was four <laughs> other teams that we know of that were yeah. doing it. And there's on, there was only six teams in the playoffs. Yeah. So, so y'all go do some math. If now. You, if, we're giving y'all, we're giving y'all the wiggle room. If anybody does some math, you could probably eliminate <laughs> one, but there's still three or three or four more. But has that has that being involved with that? Does it carry any weight? Like you know, going forward, have you carried any guilt with that, or like has it made transition into other cities different? Or you know what I mean? I mean myself, like not being actually a part of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was a part of it on the team. Exactly. But it has it has transitioned. My first year in Chicago, the New York New York was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, there was a few cities where they were watching me warm up in the bullpen and just giving it to me. Yeah. Which they usually give it to the starting pitchers warming up, but it was like an extra. It was like an extra <laughs> Google search. Dallas Dallas was up there like, oh y'all different today. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all so, different. So so to be completely honest with you, I. I, I I did as best I could to kind of channel that and just use it. Exactly. Um, because to me, when you go to a road city, if you're not expecting to get booed, you're not doing it right. 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 So if they're not booing, they don't care, baby. If you know they're not mean? booing, that you ain't a threat. You no, know you know they mean? don't care about you. They don't, they don't think that you're going to actually do anything. They got to throw you off. They yeah. go back to our whole like our trash talking analogy. You know what I mean? They they, they talk crazy because they respect you. It's, a, it's like a hidden layer of respect, you know? Yeah. It's a good way. Yeah, they, I mean, they respect the lefty, the lefty uh, non-power thrower. So I, I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, that just means you got the the real special sauce, dog. I did. I got I got some of that. That stuff that they don't want to see at the you last. Got, you got that stuff. Yeah. That boy got that stuff. Yeah. Mo most time. Most time. So what we what we got to look forward to you for this upcoming season if y'all ever get to play? You know, I hope you know what I mean. What, what do yeah, we got to look forward I like, to? I like how you worded that. <laughs> uh, what we got to look forward to? I myself to? would like to play as well, but to be honest with you, our team is, I mean, our team has everything. Yeah. I've t I told them before, I said, you guys remind me of Houston and, and a couple teams that have gotten very close and won. So it's just a matter of kind of putting all that talent together and, and, and performance on the field, man. You got any favorite players, like teammates up in Chicago? Well, I do. I mean, the, the first couple that come to mind are Jose Breu and Tim Anderson. Yeah. I mean, everybody talks about those two guys, but right. but really, I mean, it is. Yeah. It, it's, it's Jose came from Cuba. Uh, chasing the dream right he, he he did well in Cuba and and just kind of playing different countries uh, but now that he's transitioned to America and 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 done his thing in the big leagues it's he hasn't really skipped a beat he still works hard he still comes in early he still leaves late that's inspiring it is it's, it's crazy and then and then Tim I mean Tim didn't pick up ball until high school I believe yeah. if I'm if I'm quoting that right I think Tim had told me that before. I heard he picked it up late for sure, yeah. But that just shows you the, the quality of athlete he is. Right. And then, honestly, he's gotten better at shortstop and, and hitting every year. Right. So, I mean, the sky's the limit for both those guys. Right. And everybody just kind of feeds off them. You bringing any of your teammates into the golf holes with you, dog? You I had drag a, them out here? I had a few already involved in golf. So they, they were trying to get me out last year, and I was, I was like, nah, nah, nah. It's not the time. It's not the time. Oh, so you was, the, you was the one that got dragged. They dragged you out here. They try to drag me, but I, I tell them that I I wholeheartedly wanted to play. It just wasn't the right time. So I'm picking my spot to actually come in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do it on my time. Y'all don't yeah. tell me what I do it when I want to do yeah. it. So I've been I've been getting I've been getting intel from from a couple teammates just to see how they are, how they do with with a little bit of with a little bit of trash talking. 
Man, we... See, I see what you did there. I, I'm, I'm hitting a wedge and a yeah, little I'm bit just... higher flight, but then you're just crushing the ball. No, nah, I mean, you know, about it, 60 it, yards it, past me, bro. I, I just want you to know, I feel very insecure standing next to you. So I just, <laughs> I'm trying to like balance it out somehow. Uh, but no, nah, bro, I saw you got married recently, dog. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Dear, congratulations. Thank you. So how is this going to be like a lifestyle change for you? Like, and, and what went into that decision as a, as a bachelor myself? You know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell you my sentiments on marriage. I don't think it's right. We don't know each other well enough, you know, but, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying though, you know, as a bachelor, what went into Dallas tying the knot, dog? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, and this is cliche, but like when you find the right one, you know, you know. You know, and you know. I kind of thought I knew before I even met her because yeah. I was chasing her friend around to get to her for a couple years. So in all honesty, my boy is a hard worker. Yeah, I, I worked hard for a couple years, man. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I put in the work, but it wasn't um, it wasn't anything too extreme. I, we had a mutual friend when I was still in Houston. Yeah. And and thankfully, thankfully, after a couple years of her uh, dating a guy. I hit the right time to hit our mutual friend up, and yeah. she was having a bachelorette party because she was getting married at yeah. the time. And uh, Kelly was actually here, and just so happened that I hit up Adrian at the right time, like I said, and she put in a good word for me. Right. So Kelly started thinking about me. This dude, like you, the, the timing thing, bro. Like you just, you got good timing. Yeah. Like you hit her at the right time, the right. Yeah. The right well, at first point. I didn't. So I had to wait. Okay. And I'm not good at waiting. Yeah. I'm not good at waiting. I'm not a very patient guy. I like, when I like things, I like things. Yeah. And I, for one reason or another, I kind of just stayed patient. I don't know what happened. That was a life lesson right but there. But yeah, I mean, I'm very thankful. I mean, how could right. she? How could she say no to that beer, baby? <laughs> well, she how hasn't. She, seen, I know, that's all you was. She just like, yo, I just want to. If I could just get her on a Facetime, it's game over. She really. hasn't seen me without a beard. She saw you without a beard. No, she hasn't seen she, me without a beard. Oh, so shit. we we've dated three years, just married, and I've had this beard for almost eight years. That's. Cr I mean, it's an amazing beard, bro. It's been longer. It's been shorter. But, but this is kind of the this is kind of the midline. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you and James Harden took that like you like the beard. Of, you consider yourself the beard of baseball, dog. Yeah, well, you got the best beard in baseball. It hurt me at first because James started growing his out, kind of pre, right, right before he got traded. Yeah, and then my first year was his second year, I believe, with Houston, and I just kind of started growing mine out just from a, a dare with some buddies, and then you never knew you had that. No, you didn't my know. Dad, you my dad's got a huge Santa Claus beard when he can grow it, yeah, or when he when he tries to grow it. But I just was like, let's see how long I can get this thing. And that thing. Six, eight months later, it was pretty, pretty healthy. And then it just, yeah. I mean, 14, 15, 16, if, if, if they show some photos, it's got to be like Bro. down here. You know, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to make no advances at you. I'm very secure with my sexuality, but the beard, like, I'm just <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> I envy it so much. My dad didn't pass me these genetics, dog. Like he, my pops really like screwed me on a lot of different fronts, but the beard is one that I regret. Like mine kind of yeah. go in like splotchy a little bit. Don't look at it, bro. Like no, I'm I'm looking hit, at it. You hit still a got no. Here go shot. Hit that's because shot. that's on. because you got the good flow. Yeah, yeah. So look, man, how charitable of a guy are you? You consider yourself charitable? Are you working on it? Man, I try. I try. I try to sprinkle uh, a little bit of. A little bit of my time and effort into a, a couple of different buddies' charities. Yeah. I don't have one myself, no foundation, but. Okay. What, what club are you hitting right now? I got my wedge. You got a wedge? All right, I got a wedge right here, too. All okay. right, so look, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to be charitable. All right, let's go. You're a very successful person. I just want to present you with an opportunity to do something good for people in need. You know what I mean? So we're going to yes, have sir. a little closest to the pen contest. Okay. Uh, I have an organization that I work with called HRBO. All right. Uh, it's called the Help Roger Ball Out Organization. You got a lot of nice cars. What's your favorite car, dog, that you got? Oh, my baby baby is uh, 2015 Ferrari TDF. In the I garage. saw that one on your IG. That's the one I was going to ask about. I, li I like that car a lot. So look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a closest to the pin contest. Okay. One shot. Okay. Uh, if I get closer to you, if I get closer than you, um, you got to let me borrow it for a week in Chicago. Okay. You cool with that? Yeah. But I you mean, gotta, I'm you saying, gotta, bro, this is like a this is a binding statement that you're making right now. Yeah, but you got to pay for the transport though. You leave it down here. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me do the math on that. <laughs> Hold on. 
All right, can I, can I just, all right, can I take a picture with it then? Absolutely. I, okay, all right, yeah. all right. If yeah, yeah. I get close to the pin, I get a picture. Well, hey, which one are we going to? We're just going to go to this, uh, let's go to this white flag right okay, here. Okay, okay. Right? I'm going to let you go first, though, you know? I like the pressure. You go ahead and go first. All right. I'm kind of intimidated by you. I'm going to just go ahead and do what you say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to argue back with you right there. You know what I mean? It's all good. It's we got to sit back and watch this, boys. Oh, we pulled it. We pulled it. I don't even know how far, bro. That was about, what, 15 yards off We're going to the blue one? Bro, shut up. Come on. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway. Well, what do you got right there? I, it's, a, it's a wedge, bro. I was going to say, I got, I got a full wedge here. I'm just going to try to punch this thing to the white, white flag. I didn't know how far that was. Okay, best out of two, dog. I mean, best out of three. Best out of three. Best out this of three. This white flag, woof. That's even too far. Bro, that's too far left. Let's call it even. We'll watch. This is oh. the real competition. Nope. That's by far closer. Who side are y'all on? Ain't this my show? Man, full wedge. That's all right. You know, I don't need to cap on Instagram no more anyway. <laughs> that's getting me in trouble anyway, dog. You know what I mean? Man, I appreciate your time, dog. Looking forward to see you do great things this year. And hopefully you stay in the game. We get that round in. Put that word in that silver leaf for me, all right? Absolutely. We'll do right, it, man. All right, all right beat by a novice golfer with a wedge in my hand. But let this be a lesson to us all. Professional athletes are not normal people. You know, you see the beard on that dude? Bro, it's not normal. Uh, but we learned today that even a good life can take you to some pretty low places. Even when our favorite athletes let us down, it's important that we remember a couple of things. First of all, they are trying their hardest. And second, we likely suck at the thing they're doing. I mean, a lot of us suck at the things we think we're good at doing. So have some empathy and some more appreciation. So good luck this season, bro. For a dude named Dallas playing in Chicago that loves living in Scottsdale, I do like where your head is at. You're not as all over the place as people might think.